These examples come from Lesson 8.2, Hypothesis Tests for a Population Mean, Standard Deviation Known. This is Part 2 of 4. Example 7. Which provides stronger evidence against the null hypothesis? A p-value of 0.05 or a p-value of 0.50? Well, according to our rule, we know right here that the smaller the p-value is, the stronger the evidence is against the null hypothesis. So we know smaller p-values provide stronger evidence. So it's just a matter of comparing 0 0.05 to 0 0.50. The smaller one's going to provide the stronger evidence. And it looks like 0.05 will provide the stronger evidence. And the reason is because 0.05 is less than 0.50. Example 8, a test is made of the null hypothesis mu is equal to 30 versus the alternate hypothesis mu is less than 30. The test statistic is z is equal to negative 1.28. Find and interpret the p-value. Now, earlier we were doing the critical value method, and this time we're going to do p-value, so this means we're going to be dealing with areas. Now, they gave us a z-score, and when we have z-scores, that tells us we're going to need to use table A2. So we're going to find the area that we want from table A2. Now, let's just go ahead and draw a picture. We've got our normal curve here. We know this is going to be a left-tailed test because it's a less than. And our Z statistic back here is at negative 1.28. We are looking for this area back here. That will be our p-value. And again, we will be pulling that off of table A2. So let's find table A2. Right. Negative 1.2 is right here on this line. And then we need to go all the way over to the 8 column that's right here that looks like 0.1003 therefore our p-value will be equal to 0.1003 All right now for the interpretation of this thing well a couple of slides earlier our p-value interprets this way. The probability, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, of observing a value for the test statistic, which we got to be negative 1.28, that is as extreme, so as low, or more extreme, so or lower, than the value actually observed. If the null hypothesis is true, then the probability of observing a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than negative 1.28 is 0.1003. So the probability of finding a test statistic beyond the negative 1.28 that happened in our um, experiment here is right here. It's the area under the curve, which is also the probability, so 0.1003. Now remember, our threshold for unusual was 0 0.05, so this result is not particularly unusual and therefore doesn't really provide strong evidence against the null hypothesis. All right, and I added this little bitty piece down here. This is not particularly unusual because it doesn't fall within our unusual threshold of 0 0.05, so this is not strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Example 9. A test is made of the null hypothesis mu is equal to 6 
versus the alternate hypothesis mu is not equal to 6. Part A, the test statistic is z is equal to 0 0.75. We're going to find and interpret the p-value. Okay. We're going to have to draw a picture of this so we can see what's going on. If I put in my normal curve here for part A, I know my z-score is 0.75, but take a look at this. This is a two-tailed test. So remember when we're running a two-tailed test, we have a value on this end with some area behind it, and we have a value on this end with some area behind it. And remember, through the magic of symmetry, this one's just the opposite of whatever that one is right there. Well, fortunately, they're telling us what value to put here. That's going to be my z-score of 0.75. So let's replace this and this one with our values of 0.75 and negative 0.75. Now remember, when I go into table A2, and I find the area, which is going to give me the area to the left, so I'm going to look for this one first. And then by the magic of symmetry, when I know this one, I'm automatically going to know that one right there. I'm going to have to add these two areas together, because remember, when we have a two-tailed test, it's the combined shaded areas here. And that's what's going to give me my p-value. All right, so let's bring up table A2, and let's find out what the area of this blue shaded area is here to the left of negative 0.75. All right, so we're already in the negative z-scores. That's nice. Negative 0 0.7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here it is, 0 0.2266. 0 0.2266. And then through the magic of symmetry, I know that the area over here is also 0.2266. Now, one other thing I could do is I could find the um, area to the left of positive 0.75, but then to get this blue area back here, I would just have to subtract it from 1. And so I'm going to end up with the same answer anyway. All right, so the p-value for part A. It's the sum of those two areas. So we're looking at 0.2266 plus 0 0.2266 plus 0.2266. And that's going to give us point, let's see, that's 12, that's 13, that's going to be 5. So 0.4532 is going to be our p value for part A there. Okay, now our interpretation. Assuming that HO is true, the probability of finding a p-value as extreme or more extreme than 0 0.75 is 0.4532. And there's our statement. Assuming that the null hypothesis is true, the probability of finding a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one that we have, which is 0.75, is 0.4532, that's the p-value that we found. Now remember our threshold for unusual is 0.05. This is not an unusual occurrence, and so this is really weak evidence against the null hypothesis, but we'll just say it's not strong evidence against the null hypothesis. And there's the rest of our statement. This is not unusual, therefore this is not strong evidence against HO, the null hypothesis. All right, let's look at part B. The test statistic is negative 2.20. Again, we're going to find and interpret the p-value. And I'm going to erase all of this stuff and start all over again doing part B. All right, let's draw a picture of part B. Again, we know we're doing the two-tailed test here. So let's sketch in our normal curve. And our z-score they gave us to be negative 2.2. That's going to be right here. But since it's a two-tailed test, we also want to do positive 2.2 on this end. 
and our p-value is going to be the blue shaded area to the left of negative 2.2 plus the blue shaded area to the right of positive 2.2. <coughs> Excuse me, and we will bring up table A2 and find this area right here to the left of negative 2.2. Here's negative 2.20, it is 0 0.0139. And that gives me 0 0.0139 over here as well. So the p-value for part B is going to be 0 0.0139 plus 0 0.0139 and that's going to give us this is 18 that's going to be 7 to 0 0.0278 and then for our interpretation all right assuming the null hypothesis is true the probability of finding a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than negative 2.2 is 0 0.0278. Now this number is smaller than our threshold for being unusual because our threshold is 0 0.05. So this is an unusual occurrence and that makes this strong evidence against our null hypothesis. Part C which provides stronger evidence against the null hypothesis, z is equal to 0 0.75 or z is equal to 2.20, negative 2.20. Let's compare our p-values. For part A, when z was equal to 0 0.75, we said the p-value was 0.4532, and this was not an unusual occurrence. For part B, when z was equal to negative 2.20, the p-value was 0 0.0278, and this was an unusual occurrence. Well, remember, the smaller the p-value is, the stronger the evidence is against the null hypothesis. And that means, since the 0 0.0278 is smaller than the 0 0.4532, that means that our z is equal to negative 2.20, is the one that provides stronger evidence against the null hypothesis. Example 10. If p is equal to 0 0.02, which is the best conclusion? We have four choices here. Choice 1, the probability that the null hypothesis is true is 0 0.02. Choice 2, if the null hypothesis is true, the probability of obtaining a test statistic more extreme than the one actually observed is 0 0.02. Choice 3, the probability that the alternate hypothesis is true is 0 0.02. And choice 4, if the alternate hypothesis is true, the probability of obtaining a test statistic more extreme than the one actually observed is 0 0.02. Well, y'all, the problems that we've just done and the conclusions that we wrote most closely match choice number two here. And that's the one that we want to pick. Example 11. A hypothesis test is performed with a significance level of alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Part A, if the p-value is equal to 0 0.08, is the null hypothesis rejected? And then part B, if the p-value is 0 0.08, are the results statistically significant at the 0 0.05 level? All right, let's back up one here and look at this. When we're computing the p-value, if the p-value is less than or equal to the alpha value, then yes, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject. Now, please understand, we are not accepting. Do not accept the null hypothesis. We either reject it or we don't. Now, if we do end up rejecting the null hypothesis, 
then the result is considered to be statistically significant at that level. All right, so let's go back and look at our example. Our alpha level is 0.05, and we're testing to see if the p-value is less than or equal to the alpha level. Our alpha level is 0.05, our p-value is 0.08, so the question is, is 0.08 less than or equal to 0.05? Well, no, it's not. It's actually greater than that. So, no, we will not reject the null hypothesis. Are the results we just found statistically significant? Well, remember, we didn't reject the null hypothesis, so our results cannot be statistically significant. So the answer to B is no. Part C, if the p-value is 0.03, is the null hypothesis going to be rejected? Well, our p-value is 0.03, and we're still using our same alpha level here, so we need to know if 0.03 is in fact less than 0.05. Well, yes, it is. So we will reject the null hypothesis. Part D, if the p-value is 0.03, are the results statistically significant at the 0.05 level? Yes, they are. And they are statistically significant because we rejected the null hypothesis. Example 12. For each of the following p-values, state whether the null hypothesis will be rejected at the 0 0.10 level. That means this is going to be our alpha level right here, and I'm given my p-values. Remember, we're looking to see if the p-value is less than or equal to the alpha value, and if it is, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So is 0.12 less than or equal to 0.10? No, it's not. So do not reject. Part B, P is equal to 0.05. Is 0.05 less than or equal to 0.10? Yes, it is we will reject the null hypothesis. Part C, is zero, our P value is equal to 0 0.07, is 0 0.07 less than or equal to 0 0.10? Yes, it is. We will reject the null hypothesis. Part D, the p-value is equal to 0 0.20. Is 0 0.20 less than or equal to 0 0.10? No, it's not. Do not reject the null hypothesis. 